So I've been reading all these headlines, of course, and you've been covering this wonderfully on Breitbart.com about some elections that happened in Europe. What happened? Talk down to me, because I don't even know what elections. <laughs> so not just even some elections, but there was actually a European mega election last week, because, of course, uh, many European states are members of the European Union, which is attempting to turn itself over a very long period of time of many decades into a federal super state. They want to have a United States of Europe, um, which is one, one of the many reasons why Britain left the European Union, by the way. We just don't want to be part of that. But nevertheless, those that are still there, that's what they're rushing towards. And as part of this, they have a European Parliament. So they were selecting who the members of the next European Parliament was going to be. That election lasted four days, Thursday to Sunday, um, for the, what is it, 450 odd million odd people who live in the European Union. So it's big. There's a lot mm. to take in, huge numbers of results. I mean, the Parliament itself is massive. 750 members, I think, 720, something like that. So there's a lot going on. But we have seen this very definite shift continent-wide towards the right. Um, going into the election, the, shall we say, the centrist globalist right, your worldwide, homogenous, totally normal, boring sort of conservatives, centre-right, as I say, they were the biggest group already, um, they picked up extra seats. You know, they are now, by a, you know, a considerable margin, the largest group within the European Parliament. But what's more interesting to me is what happened below, below the neck, if you like. Um, left wing and liberal and green parties doing very badly. Uh, the liberals and the greens in particular got a real kicking. Uh, and picking up those seats being released by, say, the greens uh, is actually the populist right. Uh, the European Parliament has two... Um, what you might call uh, populist right groups. They have the ECR, uh, which is a more like full-blooded conservatism. But you would say they're like, you know, strong, old-school right. And then you have the ID group, uh, which is, you know, what you would call, you know, sort of populist, real conviction, um, you know, closed borders, anti-mass migration, and quite Eurosceptic at times. And those two groups are picking up um, more seats as well. So it's a definite shift to the right, um, and we're seeing um, real consequences of that vote already. Okay, uh, just to get the, the parties right. And like, I, I understand like right and left barely even works here anymore. And I don't, I don't know if that even translates to Europe anymore. So I, I'm, always, I'm always skeptical of headlines that are like the right wins. Like I don't, I don't really know what that means here, let alone there. But I'm looking at a, a, a list here of all the members of the European Parliament who won. Uh, so the... The populist, you say the ID, is, are they called Identity and Democracy? Is that the name of that group? That's right. So obviously you have, because mm -hmm. it's a, a, an election for the whole of Europe, all those countries, you have all of the national parties, which correspond with like their domestic politics. And they group into these like super groups inside the, inside the European Parliament. So um, like the, the ID group, as you, as you mentioned, the Identity and Democracy group, I think they've got like a dozen like member parties from various European states within that. Um, the uh, EPP group, you know, again, more acronyms, I apologize, as I call them, the, the centrist, European People's the Party, center rightist, the globalist sort of soft conservatives. That's a huge party. Mm. Um, and they, they must have best part of 30 different political parties from across Europe in there, which is a lot. So, you know, just a sort of a convenient shorthand, we're talking about these political groups because they agree to band together and work together with like-minded groups from across Europe in the European Parliament. Mm. Um, it's only in a okay. handful of cases where it's really useful talking about national parties, like in France, um, with uh, the, uh, the the national the, the national um, resemble national, um, which is you know, Marine Le Pen's populists. Or in Germany, for instance, with the alternative for Deutschland, you know, these are these are the, the parties which are big enough to be important on their own, and also which have been really consequential in this election. Okay, uh, and just one last point on the, the names. So, European People's Party. To me, I hear, I see the word "peoples" and I think "communist," but you're saying those are like that's like the like the conservative sort of globalist right. The European People's Party. Yeah, I mean, and you then think, you have the Conservatives. The, if you think about the European People's Party, think about how the Republicans used to be, pre-Donald Trump Republicans. Yeah, like the Mitt Romney. Yeah. yeah. Like a Mitt Romney. And then Conservatives and Reformists, and that's another conservative group. And then Identity and Democracy, which is uh, which is like the, the further right. So you're saying, so the big picture here, and then we'll go into more detail, but the big picture is those groups did great, and the Green Party and the leftists did really bad. 
yeah, I, I don't know if I want to say that these right-wing groups did great. This wasn't a landslide, but it happened, right? This is this is a, a real result. Okay. Um, they uh, they're clearly going to dominate the European Parliament for the next five or six years, um, and it's you know, it's a clear that the 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 what I'm look, the words I'm looking for are that the the trends are very clear. This has changed the composition of the Parliament. Mm-hmm. You know, the 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 left wing groups. It's not like they've been you know summarily executed at dawn. The parties are still there, but they no longer have the numbers to make the difference they used to. Okay, you got a headline here: Macron, President of France, and this is all also in the context of the Olympics coming up in like a month or two. But Macron trounced by Le Pen's populists at Euro Parl elections immediately dissolves parliament for snap national election <laughs> what I, I, I hear us here in america we're like dissolves parliament what, what are you talking about what is happening in france so so obviously um in the european context if you say you dissolve parliament that has a specific meaning it doesn't mean that the body's been abolished it means that it's been uh, stood down for fresh elections so all of the members of france's parliament have lost their jobs they have to stand for election again and that's actually happening really soon so we were just talking about what happened European trend-wise. Europe-wide, there was a shift to the right. It wasn't an earthquake, but it was it was big enough to matter. That is not the case in France, where uh, Marine Le Pen's national rally group, the RN as they call them, because obviously um, that's the way the French speak, we're guys, um, they had a massive breakthrough. Uh, they got the best result of any French political party at a national election in 40 years. Um, They got twice as many votes as President Emmanuel Macron's party. This was huge. So Macron is left with a a real real dinger now, isn't he? Because he's still got two years left of um, his uh, mandate. In fact, I think it's possibly more than two years. I think it's uh, possibly 2027 he's got to run as president. And how can you... Uh, in a system like that, where you you do have an executive president, but you also have a parliament with a prime minister underneath you, how can you exert um, your authority as president when the French people have so recently massively voted against you? This is a referendum on Macron, right? Mm. So he can continue as a lame duck president, or he can do what he has done, which is literally within minutes of the result being announced. It was like like a spring being unleashed, he immediately announced a national election. So dissolve the French parliament, they're all going to go back to the polls, you know, the French people, and they're going to have this two, because obviously the French system is two rounds, um, at the end of this month and at the beginning of next. So this is a very, very short election campaign, uh, and it's short and sharp. So the president of France gets to just decide when they have elections? So normally they run on a uh, a five year um, system, uh, but yes, I mean it's in in that respect it's not unlike say in the United Kingdom, uh, where theoretically the king can dissolve Parliament any time he likes. Says this isn't working. We need a we need a fresh vote. Um, and actually, why would Macron want to do that if he just got cru- if his party got crushed? Why would he want to leave it up to the people to go vote for uh, Le Pen's party? Okay, fantastic question, and that really gets to the heart of what's going on here because you have people saying that you know, Macron's a genius, this is the way to destroy Le Pen and the right-wing populists that we hate. On the other hand, you've got people saying Macron's an idiot, he's made a massive strategic mistake, and this is going to kill him. So let's look at where these two opinions come from. If you think this is a masterstroke, um, the chances are you will believe this. Um, Macron, if he continues now without an election, will have no mandate, because everybody will say, well, you lost the last election, whether you're president or not, we don't care what you think. His plan, therefore, okay. is to fight this election. And there's obviously there's two outcomes. He can win, then his power is totally cemented. He'll have control of the parliament, control of the palace, uh, and he will be president and then very likely be reelected again. Or he loses. Okay. And according to this plan, Macron still wins if he loses. Because if you are from this sort of, you know, this, this centrist point of view, you're a globalist, you hate the populist right, you think they're evil racists and they're stupid, they're knuckle knuckle drug the draggers. You believe if you give the chance to Marine Le Pen to control France's parliament now, that gives her two years to show the country how stupid she really is. Because you believe she's incompetent, she can't rule, and actually given some real power, she will demonstrate that to the people. So you're playing a long game there. 
and you're thinking, okay, okay. we're going to give them a taste of power. It's going to it's going to reveal them to be rubes, to be incompetent, to be stupid. And then in three years' time, when it's time for fresh presidential elections, we're going to win by an even greater um, uh, an even greater uh, percent because. The, okay. the, that they know what the enemy truly is. So that's 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 the Macron gambit. Now, on the other hand, if you, for instance, believe that uh, you know we need Marine Le Pen uh, to save France from you know, globalism, mass migration, you're looking at this and thinking, Macron, you have just signed your own death warrant. We are going to take control of uh, the uh, the French Parliament. This will give us the opportunity, for instance, to call a vote of no confidence in the presidency, and we will bring you down, we will have fresh presidential elections, and Marine Le Pen is going to be the president of France. So that's where the two ideas are coming from. The question is, therefore, can Marine Le Pen win this election? And again, I think this is part of Macron's, um, Macron's gambit. Think about what happened in the United Kingdom, for instance, you know, Britain, when we were still in the European Union. Nigel Farage leader of uh, UKIP and then the Brexit party would win the European Union elections every single time, just like Marine Le Pen has done. And a part of the reason for that is that the British people were voting for him as a protest. It was a, it was, it was a sending a message to Westminster to say, we hate you guys, you suck, please pay attention to us, we're voting for Nigel Farage. But there was something that happened when it came to national election time when it was time to select the government for the United Kingdom, not you know, who we're going to send mm. off to an unimportant party in, uh, sorry, unimportant parliament in Brussels. When it was actually time to select the government, people went back to voting for the old school traditional parties. Like maybe they were just, Interesting. they were too scared maybe, or they thought, you know, the protest is gone, now it's time for real grown up politics. It's not a very nice way of looking at it, but it does seem to be that's the way people used to think back then. Now, is Macron hoping for the same in France? Okay, Marine Le Pen won by a enormous, absolutely uh, yes. huge majority these European um, elections, and, and Macron says, "Okay, the public, f you. If you're so serious about this, let's see if you're man enough to do it again for the actual uh, real national election that wins." And I think that's uh. what he's doing. He is daring the French people to oppose him, and that's very, in, very, very in uh, in character for Macron.